open and you can then interact with your TV with the uh, the technology that, that's put in you. And it may be a, both in the uh, forehead and in, in, uh, under the hand. It may be uh, linked to your nervous system uh, that would uh, g- give you stimulation and give you like a feel good little rush. You know, some, some kind of thing like that to make people just maybe line up around the block for that chip. But whatever it is, it's you're out of the Lamb's Book of Life at that point. And um, you're out of the Lamb's Book of Life because there's been a genetic alteration. I mean, it's, it's, it really just gets down to science. You know, and uh, God will not tolerate his, the genome they created being abridged. And that's why, you know, the, the longer Monsanto tries to go and these other people try to go with their genetic modification, the closer God's wrath comes. The closer World War III comes. The closer they're going to lose everything comes. The Lord will not sit back, even if this isn't the NNN, period. Even if, the Lord will still put an end to the, to the destroyers, to the genome alterers. And also create abominations to make it, you know, to create illnesses and abominations. Things like that will come out of it, just like the drug companies who try to make drugs. And what happens in, in most, except for say pain medication, because that'll hook you, but, but you know, pain medication works very well. It does what it's supposed to do. But a lot of these other drugs don't like Prozac, for example, for depression can cause homicidal or suicidal tendencies in people and probably already have with some of these shootings. You know, I'm sure they're using psychotropic drugs to, 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 and mind control to, to get the, you know, under the, under the guise of sending the kid to the shrink. And what's happening is they're getting programmed to do some awful thing. Absolutely. You know, and, uh, and that all has an agenda like, yeah, they'll sacrifice the kids of Sandy Hook. And then there's all that talk about the satanic at Sandy Hook and the fact that the families are satanic and that these people are in satanic cults. And this sacrifice was something everyone agreed upon. Um, Are you kidding? I've been talking about this for, uh, you know, a long time. I mean, you know, going on 11 years here and we've talked about all this. Oh, we've, we've already covered all that. Should that shock anyone that, you know, well-to-do families in Connecticut may be in a satanic cult and that their kids may be ritually abused and uh, part of a, of a, you know, and what's the deep, dark secret of Satanism? It's the bloodletting, right? So, um, yes, that would not surprise me. I don't really care, though. In other words, what, what, what difference does it make? Innocent children were gunned down. Did their parents sacrifice them? Why were they all laughing and having no tears when they were describing their kids? Why, why is there the possibility that they're actors and people don't even actually know where the bodies are? Because it was, a lot of it was theater. It was staged. It was murder. It was theater. It was satanic ritual, all rolled into one to be the platform that will successfully take away the guns. And that's it. It doesn't matter. They just needed a pretext to get it started, and it will just lead to um, confiscation. How much longer do we have before that brings, and that will bring about conflict and, you know, civil war of some type. And uh, it seems that that's what um, Obama wants to be Lincoln. So, you know, the Lincoln vibe is in, so therefore civil war must become a reality so that he can solve it and be, you know, the great president. Because remember, part of this, he, there's a part of him that doesn't understand quite, and none of them do, you know, even though like Valerie Jarrett's a witch and some of these are high-level witches and, and Napolitano and these other people, they're all in the, the Luciferian satanic thing. But I found that a lot of them are, they don't see the big picture, you know. They see it works one day, it doesn't work the other. You know, they, they feel helpless sometimes. And, uh, you know, um, that's why they want him indwelt, so there's consistency. So that people can definitively say, this is our God, Lucifer, Barack Obama. And, and they'll say, this is our God, and he's come to save us from these evil um, individuals, uh, Jesus freaks, these constitutionalists, conservatives, people that, uh, you know, 
whatever. You, you don't see the an individualist like a libertarian, even if he claims to be an atheist. He's not. He can't be. If he's going to stand against the collectivist Luciferian thing, then he wouldn't be one of them. So he'd have to, he'd have to just be an unawakened soul. I mean, that's that's all it is. And I know my friends who are successful in business and in um, in life. Let's say, I know that you agree with me about the, what I've the picture I painted here. That you agree that you know you're taking another look at your material possessions and your things, and you're realizing that obviously. Um, in the end, I mean, you know, you can't take it with you. You know, you're getting that lesson now to realize just what's important. And that's going to make you maybe shift some of your time to your kids or your, you know, um, not just uh, enslaving yourselves to the almighty dollar, you know, per se, or trying to work, work, work and get, but, you know, work has to take on a different meaning. Like you want to, you know, it's, it's, uh, you might, you know, just let the Lord lead you in, in those things. But, um, or the work takes on a different dimension in that it's in balance in the context of, you know, but this could be the end for us all. At the same time, there's work, there's, there's, there's dinners, there's, you know, social things, there's, 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 there's still goodness to, to be had because our people, if anything, they love to get together and break bread and drink wine and, you know, dance around. And so they love to do that. There's a great joy in not being completely alone and stranded, although there are quite a few that are in that category. And, um, but work and all these things, all these things we do takes on a different meaning with this in the background, doesn't it? Okay, I'll, I'll tell you the meaning. Life is precious. Every moment is precious. What really counts right now? How should I spend my time, Lord? You know, and um, for some people that spend most most of their time away from their families, maybe, you know, maybe alter that a little bit. But God doesn't want people not to work. He doesn't. He absolutely um, does not want people to to sit there and and wait for the rapture. And uh, you know, I'm not against any rapture theory or theorist. You know, I fully understand that, and I fully, you know, I kind of know innately. That, um, you know, you're not meant to be, you know, Revelation 19, you know, before uh, the, 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 the wrath of the Lamb, the actual King of Kings shows up, faithful and true, uh, who is also the Word of God, uh, with, a, with his vesture dipped in blood. I mean, you know, this is the vengeance. And, and he shows up also on what? A white horse. That's how we know the first white horse is the Antichrist because he would have the same color horse as the Lord. He would be called the morning star just like the Lord. Because he would be anti, he'd be everything Christ, but like in a mirror. So he would have a white horse. And of course he rides in on a white horse, thwarting the other guy's white horse, right? That's the end of the ride of the first horse of the apocalypse. Amen. That the, 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 so, so, but, but before that we have the great feast of God where all the kings and queens and all their servants and everyone who bowed down is being eaten by the birds. It's called vengeance. Then we see the one who has brought it all to bear the rider on that, the real white horse who kicks the other guy off that his white horse. And he is the word of God. He's faithful and true. He's the vesture dipped in blood, which is, the, the, in other words, that his battle will spill blood, wreak vengeance, and bring justice to an unjust world. And yet he's so mysterious. He has eyes of flame of fire. Nobody can really see what he is. They, they, it's almost like, you know, they're, they're, they're putting on a metaphorical appellation, a metaphorical vision, but, I mean, no one can really look at him. He's not something you can cuddle up to. He's not like you can go give him a hug. This is just, you can't even stand next to this horse and this rider. You, it, it's almost like that, uh, the, 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 the TV show, the ghost rider, when he turns into that, that flaming skeleton or whatever. You know, it's something supernatural that you can't 
you know, deal with. Really, I mean, you could deal with that, I suppose, seeing a flaming skull riding a bike down the road. But uh, you can't. It, it's just too overwhelming. This is pure vengeance. This is purity of vengeance. This is what Islam has always purported itself to be, that they're cleansing the way for the for God, but they're not. You know, it's all corrupt and, you know, it's re- religion. It's just like any other religion. It's all corrupt. But this is pure fire. This is pure fire. This is the cleansing fire that levels everything and brings it all down to its basic element once again. And everything that is not of God is taken off the earth, is leveled. And, and yes, I know the Bible talks about people still being on the earth, the nations still being around, because he'll rule with a rod of iron. He'll be the ruler over the nations. So there would still have to be nations. But I don't know what that means, because it also says that all these people that were you know, Babylon, Babylon the Great, and all the people that served and all the kings and all the queens and all that, they were all slain. Then the Lord, the book, the word talks about ruling with a rod of iron and nations. Well, I don't know how much nations there there would be after a thing like that because, I mean, in a thing like that, you're talking about a global war where... um, 90% 90% of the people on earth uh, have been slain. So there must be new nations that prop up. You know, I, I look at it, there, there's a time, there's a thousand years where there's new nations and, you know, the, the, the people of God return to the earth and there's there's a, a, a rebuilding of the nations of which he'll rule like a rod of iron and then the end shall come. And... Um, the people that are suffering and burning and stuff and being punished, I suppose. Yeah, I, I don't know. The, the, there's a, a lot of ways to look at that. I'm not going to cover that today. The main thing is I just wanted you to hit on you know, the Barack Obama drama of uh, whether he is or is not the AC. He continues to fulfill more and more prophecies about that. The people like Oprah Winfrey, she thought he was the one right off the bat. People that have been watching him have been grooming him. They've been, you know, they wouldn't do that unless they thought he was the one when he was a kid that he had to demonstrate that he had abilities that would show that he was Lucifer's choice. He, he, there are people that will quibble with it and say he's got to be from the Middle East, he's got to be this, he's got to be that. But in his mixed race heritage, he's got all that. You know, he's, he's able to be all those things. Anyway, look, the top people on that side believe he is the one, their Messiah. He, they believe, they already worship, there's already churches, there's already, and they will want anyone who doesn't killed. Absolutely. And the people around you now that voted for him will turn into those seething executioners over the next few years. They will want, you know, you dead if you don't agree. You can already see it in blogs, on TV. You can see how... They're not just mean spirited. They're murderous right now. They want. They were joking about um, shooting Alex Jones and shooting the people that want gun control. They're they're laughing about shooting people that have guns. They want you know if you don't worship and bow down and worship the beast, the Book of Revelation says you will be killed. It talks about lots of tribulation saints. A lot of the saints today want to be out of here when that happens. They want to be raptured before these trials and tribulations are going on where people are simply, you know, um, killed just for believing in God, you know, just for not being, you know, sorry, it's nothing personal, but we have to eliminate anyone who is not of us off the earth so we can have our utopia. They're not wise enough to understand that they're, that God planned it a certain way and there is no, you know, it's like you can't pull the thorn out and... You can't get rid of one side or the other. You know, both sides are stuck with each other until God changes it. They can't change it, but they think they can. And of course, they're going to be met with, they're going to have a Waterloo that will, that will be the uh, Waterloo of all Waterloos. The defeat Barack Hussein Obama will take after all his exploits will be nothing short of uh, the ultimate fall from grace and disaster where his own people will, will look upon him with scorn. 
People who once worshipped him will look upon him with scorn. When they realize it's all in his mind that he was just really a uh, hurt child, narcissistic, um, programmed, you know, selfish. But, you know, all those qualities are satanic qualities. I mean, why should people be surprised that he would be all those things? Because that's, that's what that way of life breeds. It's all about me. I do what I want. You're there to serve me. Period. You know, and whereas with the Lord, it's all the opposite. I'm here to be the servant of all. I'm here to take a lowly position because the highest will be made the lowest, so we don't ever seek the high position. It can't be low, lowlier than I don't even have a church or anything, not that I'd want one at this point, but I mean, you know, there was nothing, you know, that could have been a possibility, <laughs> but but that would never happen with anybody, anyone who... Uh, isn't vetted by Satan, will not ever get a church. And that's just, you know, the bottom line on earth. I mean, I, I don't know why it's so complex. I think people are in denial because they just don't want to admit that what I'm saying is 100% true because they would then kill themselves. I'm like, what, what's the big deal? Because I'm invested, Brother Z, I've, I've done all but taken the mark myself. Is there no hope for me? Well, if you don't change, why should there be hope? If you, you took your path because you believed that there was hope there, how'd that work out for you? Not too well, so make a change. And the thing I feel guilty about the most is persecuting Christians. But I've had to do it because that was part of my career path. You know, that I had to do things to get a promotion. And that, you know, was one of the things I used to do. I'd harass Christians or set it up so they'd fail or try to get people to commit suicide or try to ruin their lives or have affairs with their wives so that I could, you know, and then hurt them all and then have them break up and then that I would advance. And then I got addicted to it, addicted to it all, to doing evil. And then I, I, I just need, I need to be redeemed. And it's like, well, okay, there's time right now. Is, is that kind of like the, the scenario you're struggling with? The fact that you not just got into it, but you got addicted to it. And that's the only life you've ever known. But when you look at yourself in the mirror, are you very happy with what you see? I mean, I, you know, but look, when I look in the mirror, I don't, I, I just see, I don't even know what I'm looking at. But I don't, it's not like I'm feeling, you know, I feel ashamed of not being a better child of God, I guess, I suppose. But I don't think you feel um, ashamed for not being a better child of Lucifer. You probably feel bad that you still have a conscience, which is a good thing, that you have a conscience. And you probably feel that um, you that if you ever let yourself look at all the bad things you've done to, to, to be where you are today, that you would just want to die yourself so you can't look at it so you feel stuck. And I'm here to say the Lord will comfort you and will fill up all those things. And, and everybody in a war does bad things. You know, People gun down whole villages. There's a guy that's on trial now for having, this is more, way more evil than anything you've ever done. He gunned down the whole village. You know, and then they want to try him and put him in jail forever or whatever. But he took them all out. Women, children, kid, everything. He took them all out. Which is understandable when, you know, in, when you're in a war. That things like that will happen. And uh, so he took them all out. You know, and that's not probably not his first rodeo. He's probably done that a few times. I know, you know, and then these guys come back after doing something like that, like the Fallujah thing, and they feel so traumatized from their own actions. And I'm telling you, Jesus can heal. You can shoot everybody in the room and have redemption in Jesus and never do it again because he, he, he heals you. You know, but in, in man's way, you can never be forgiven for that. You know, it's like if that Holmes guy finally found the Lord and, you know, I, w whether he lives very long in there, I don't know. 
whether he'll be docile like Hinckley, who is another program robot, or whether they, they, they'll kill him to, to not spill the beans on his programming. Don't know. But yes, a guy like Holmes, after what he's been through, you know, he, to me, Holmes was just military program, typical uh, PSYOP to get guns, right? Why would these things be happening? So then that didn't really work. So then they said, okay, well, let's, you know, kill a whole bunch of kids in a school. That'll do it. And they'll keep on doing it. And it's, yes, it's aspects of the government, the, the military industrial complex, the, 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 the royal hierarchy that rules the planet, whatever you want to say, that's what they've always wanted. And with Obama, they feel they can get it because he, after all, is the Antichrist. But to them, he would be called the Christ, the anointed one, the one. That is increasing now as he's able to rule as a king, but with, there is no government. There is no government. He rules by edict and de decree as a king. We told you that was going to happen, and it did happen. What do you think of that? Isn't that something? We've never seen that in our lifetime. Detach yourself from the emotional meaning of it. And look at it more like, a, like, like you're in a history class. Isn't that something? It's something, isn't it? The writers on their side were right about his supernatural powers. To me, he's already displaying supernatural powers. Already. Tremendous ones. You know, I've never seen anyone just do what they want and say what they want. He's perfectly acceptable. He's not like a John Kennedy who had a conscience and who... Um, basically wanted to expose the shadow government, this, this, this thing behind the scenes that was ru ruining everyone's lives, and he paid with his life for that. He was going to expose it, and, he, and, and he, that's why they killed him, because he was going to expose it. When we say the shadow government, we mean, we don't mean, there is no shadow government. There's a Luciferian kingdom behind it all. And they run all the presidents and everybody, and, you know, it's all fixed, and it's been fixed for our whole lives. You know, and then and then Kennedy, you know, his programming kind of broke, and he and he started wanting to rebel, and they took him out, and there was ne there's never been another guy rebelling again after that. In other words, the Kennedy sent a message, and so all the future presidents got in line. You know, people that do know about what happened on nine one one, they're not allowed to talk about it. You know, no one's ever going to believe it's a bunch of box cutters that just got together and, you know, somehow got control of these planes and flew them with tremendous G-forces and whatever with great accuracy and that's nah, all BS. They're most likely flown by remote control. And, you know, unfortunately, people that you know and trust were probably some of them involved. But they're never going to say anything about it because if they do, they're, what? Boom, gone. The, all the scientists purge. When the, when the big purge came for them, boom, gone. Because they could have spilled the beans about, you know, the nefarious plans. Anybody that's worked on anything that knows anything is in danger. If I were them, I'd leave the country. Because, you know, anyone that knows anything that could be an indictment against Obama, for example, or anybody, or this whole way this whole thing is going, you better get out of harm's way. Because they will want to clean up all witnesses that know anything. So it's all a squeaky clean environment. The purge was on with the scientists, and they're all gone now. Just the autopsy report for Andrew Breitbart talking about another conspiracy. Uh, the, uh, the, the guy doing the autopsy, he died also. And it was ruled natural causes. Guy just suddenly drops dead. Um, he had information he was going to be coming forth with that never did come out so far as I know. That would have fixed any election forever. Well, them's fighting words because Obama was, was already slated for eight years. The people have nothing to do with it. And uh, the people have never had anything to do with it, and they never will. You just give the people the voting ballot because they think they can go to the box. It makes a difference. I did, you know, I, I kind of, you know, I hoped. I The Lord kind of wanted me to go through the, the paces of that and to really kind of get something. And so I did, you know, just like if he wants me to go through something, I'll go through it. What I learned was, you know, that sitting like a bump on a log, like, you know, everything is, is, and not 
acting in the drama and the play that God has made is a blasphemy against God. And that's, that's why I was, you know, and also I was trying to save my fellow man by, by making sure that this antichrist guy didn't get going again, because I knew if he got going again, that would be the ball game, you know? And, and so far it is the United States ever since he won. And I said, that's it. The USA is over. It ceased even functioning like the United States the day that he won. The Congress became irrelevant. The Senate became irrelevant. The uh, judiciary became irrelevant. Everything became irrelevant at the same moment. Yeah, they go through the forms, but there is no relevancy anymore to indicate that the United States was you know, uh, successfully overthrown. And um, so now it's, you know, you're, the sentence, the punishment comes which is either mass death. And no, you're, a lot of you that believe in the rapture would, you know, unfortunately be killed, and I just hope that doesn't ruin your faith. Or it's going to be some kind of like years of some sort of slave state, or elections abolished, or getting repealing a certain amendment so he can be elected again, like FDR. And, uh, you know, it's just going to be very difficult for you people that are, Christians, conservatives, Conserv when I say conservative, what do I mean? I mean no abortion, um, biblical interpretation of marriage, uh, uh, upholding the Constitution as, a, as the sacred founding document of the United States, uh, believing in the rule of law, um, Believing in limited government and uh, and 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 a, and a robust private sector. Okay, um, you know that would be it would also be a libertarian to a certain extent. If you remove the social issues, you'd have a libertarian, which would be um, not not throwing people in jail for marijuana. That's silly, and and that that's the most ridiculous thing that anyone's ever heard in their life. It just shows there's a prison racket that they make money off the, putting people in prison. Um, you know, it also should be noted that the, another plan that's, that's, that's going on now is to saturate the entire country with drugs. I mean, more than the, you know, from the Mexican cartels, from the Baja cartels, the Sinaloa cartel and others to go ahead and saturate, you know, to anesthetize people. So they're better hypno hypnosis subjects to all get everyone as but many as they can in this period to wake up and understand it's all about worship of a body. You have to, they've already made commitments like in schools where people pledge allegiance to a bond. They pledge to serve him with and, and defend him with their life. He is the new country. You know, to be patriotic is to serve him. They've even floated images of his picture on the flag rather than stars. It goes on and on and on like that. All that you've seen all this, but Behind the scenes, what it means is that he is their king and their God who's in a, in a form of a man to come to save them. And, you know, you're seeing manifestations of that belief, including, you know, people that are in positions to do great harm, like military and law enforcement and, and the FBI and the CIA, who have also made that pledge for life to Obama, like the Secret Service, he signed that they will be pledged to him for life. They have to actually pledge to him. You know what I mean? He he made a stru he he made a structural manifestation out of a thing that's already happening. So they will at some point realize that there must be a sacrifice, and they must sacrifice their enemies, which are the people that believe in God. And, 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 you know, believe in, uh, you know, a lot of things I said, libertarian, which is what really what I am, would believe in no wars, foreign wars, you know, would keep the, 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 the would believe in strong borders and national identity for sure. Um, and would basically save trillions and trillions of dollars by not getting involved in you know the, the, the would you know the government would not be involved in a million different social uh, programs to 
to guarantee that all the outcomes come out the same or whatever else they're doing. That's the communist thing. Totally against that, but against military adventures and against, you know, judging social issues like, you know, for example, uh, it's a big conservative issue to be gay, gay marriage, to, you know, support it, to deny gay marriage, whatever, whatever it is. I say the government gets out, out of all those things. Let the, let the people who are religious and non-religious marry one another a, as they will and let people just be, get out of the job of trying to legislate uh, sexual morality. And I, I believe that there'd be a lot less sexual problems if people were just the way, you know, people. And then you could see, you know, it's not all it's cracked up to be. And there's, you know, um, I, you know, I understand that's a simplistic way of going about it because you also have things like, what do you do with all the babies born out of wedlock if you don't want abortion? And, and I, you know, I would... All these things, um, I'm just pointing out that all those thoughts and all those policies that, I, that would come from all the things I just said would be the enemy of those in power. You know, it's do what thou wilt, lift up perversion, put down morality, put down any kind of, you know, uh, what was traditional sex or traditional marriage or traditional anything, lift up the opposite, break up the families, have the kids raised by the state, um, saturate the place with drugs so people will be compliant and take them over. But take them over, meaning they must pledge. They must pledge. And I, I find it funny that all this came out of a guy that wanted to be served in sex, but wouldn't serve anybody else. Do you see um, Obama serving anyone else? No, it's all about serving him, but he doesn't serve anyone else. He doesn't serve the American people, which people, at least the presidents of the past would fake it. No. It's all about serving him. He doesn't serve other people. And in his sex practices, he never served anyone else. He only wanted to be served. I find that fascinating, how that then led to the same way he behaves in sex is the same way he behaves in, um, you know, in, uh, in life, that he, in a sense, absorbs all the worship and all the praise and all the adoration and then manifest with power to go conquering and to conquer and to not reciprocate to the people that gave him. In other words, the people gave him those tax hikes and then out of their paychecks, they had to pay and they were all shocked. <laughs> That's because you don't know who, what you're dealing with here. You don't know what you're dealing with. You, you know, and, and, and again... There are psyops out there to get Christians to think this is the AC and this is it. I'm just, I got to say it. I have to, I, I know that I've been playing uh, kind of a little bit fast and loose with this and not really coming down and saying, yep, this is it. And not, doesn't mean I'm not going to have Johnny Kleck on to describe, you know, and I want to get back into having some interviews and things, which stoking up the show, which, you know, the studio has been built out and had to, do an album and you know a lot of things got put to the side because of that now we're able to get a little bit more organized in terms of I have to do a very unique thing to be able to bring a uh, uh, podcast interview in the good news is that when I bring it in that I can record all everything on separate channels which is wonderful because I can then adjust the levels and you know I can make it sound good um, but the iPad is involved and Skype so that's you know, that's interesting how that ends up being involved in um, in a uh, any kind of interview thing and rather than the traditional um, uh, broadcast hosts and different things that people use to, to bring in uh, audio in, into a phone line or whatever and then onto a computer. Now we're, you know, we, we use Skype and uh, most radio stations, I was looking at, at one called the Talk Radio Network. And, um, you know, that's where they have a bunch of different hosts to talk about different things. And if you want to be a host on there, I, I guess, you know, they'll, they'll charge you. And it's not like blog talk radio. It's a little more pro than that, but it's a similar concept. Still a pay to play. You pay them and then they, uh, they, they, they give you the architecture of the show. And then you, you know, you call in, but they want you to be on Skype 
and then they have a live producer with every show, so the producer will answer the calls and forward them or not, and you give a thing on your screen about who's waiting, and it's pretty cool. Uh, and there are people you know on that network, obviously. I'm not going to mention who they are, but there are people that you know and I know. I suppose the next thing we need to talk about is the return of the fallen angels and uh, the return, the, the, uh, the, 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 the supernatural UFO signs and wonders that will make people marvel after the beast so much they'll, they'll be on their faces. This would be a critical component of the coronation. They would have to be present, just like there were UFOs around Jesus at the time of birth, at the time of, of uh, around childhood. They've always been around Jesus. There would be UFOs also around Obama. It would have to be uh, for this. For, for the, there's that component of it. I know that um, when we talked about the head wound, people say they keep looking for a head wound. And um, I know that uh, when, when, I, when I mentioned it to Johnny yesterday, he was saying that uh, th this scar on his head qualifies because the head wound is not like in present time where you're going to see a head wound and then not. And um, that, that, that's already fulfilled. And then I said, but then they're marveling after the beast. And it makes it look like they're marveling after because he survived this head wound that no one could survive. And then he had all these powers after the head wound. And I mean, you know, but he was saying it doesn't have to go like that to, to be fulfilled. Um, and just remember this. The beast I saw was like unto a leopard. Any of you seen Obama morphing to a leopard? And his feet were as of the feet of a bear. And his mouth was as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. The dragon. And they call the dragon Satan. And I saw one of his heads, as it were, wounded to death. Okay. Now, what he's saying, uh, Johnny, Johnny Cleck, is saying that he saw one of his heads as if it were wounded unto death. One, I can actually, as we parse this, we'll say, I saw one of his heads. So we're dealing with a metaphor here. We're talking about a man here. We're, we're you know, obviously... So one of his heads in this vision was wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed and all the world wondered after the beast. So what he is saying is that, that, that this, these, and let me parse it the way that, that, that he did for me on the phone yesterday. Okay. So his deadly wound was healed. So there'd be a scar there that you see that he obviously had a wound and now it's healed. Okay, that was the vision John. It doesn't mean the people saw that. It doesn't mean that was on public display. It means that it was healed and all the world wondered after the beast. So, and in addition to that, the world wondered after the beast. Wondered, is he the one? Is he the one? Is he the one? When he comes to power. And they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. Yes, they all do. From Oprah Winfrey to the New Agers to the, they're all, all, yeah, everyone that bows down to Lucifer, everyone that bows down in their secret circles of shame, all worship the dragon, all, and know all about it. And they worship the beast saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? That is the, that has already been answered right now. No one can make war with him. You see that. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And that goes back to Daniel, as you know. And power was given him to continue 40 and two months. Now that's interesting. You know. Um, I would say 40 and two months after the coronation. After the, the indwelling. So I mean, now we have to back it up in time a little bit. Because 60 months, 12 months in a year, two years is 24 months, three years is 36 months, and then four more months. So that would be about one term. 
So ra- there are rabbis who were parsing Daniel with the same information here. It parallels Daniel pretty well here. And they were saying that they only thought that Obama would be there for three and a half years. Basically, more or less, you know. And um, uh, the way that I would look at something like this is say, but, okay, we see tendencies of all these things. Let's just say that the coronation hasn't happened yet. The indwelling of Lucifer. That would be the dragon who would have to give power to the beast. It would be the indwelling of Satan. So that we haven't seen and that we're about to see. And then the rest of his term would be about 40 months. Correct? So it didn't happen before. We all know that the first four years he didn't have Satan. He had tendencies. He had some some things to show he was very Luciferian and very narcissistic and very selfish and whatnot, you know, in the golf games and the lavishing and the parties. And it's all about him, blah, blah, blah. He, he wants people to serve him. He does not serve people. They get thrown under the bus usually if they're in the way and they be a trusted friend. A good Satanist will take glee in taking their best friend and stabbing them in the back. That's just part of the satanic tradition. That's just the way they are. So anyway... So let's look at it that way. And then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Well, he's, he's done that, but he would have to do that afterwards. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. Yikes. Sounds different now than the last time you read it, huh? And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the, in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. That's the key phrase slain from the foundation of the world. All everything you see here, I know it's hard to believe is of God setting up his vengeance to avenge the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man has an ear, let him hear. He that leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here comes the, this is the answer. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. Absolutely. This is, this is like an aside statement that really ties in with more with Revelation 18. And what it means is that, you know, it's the teaching of Jesus where Jesus says, you know, to, to Peter, you know, you live by the sword, you'll die by the sword, you know. And it was a lesson that, that he that, 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 you know, those that put the people into captivity, they will go into captivity. A- anything that you do, it's like the, it's like the, the ultimate um, God is saying that they will also pay. I know it looks like they haven't paid, but they will pay because this is the patience and the faith of the saints that reap what you sow will be put back into order. I know you haven't heard it like that before, but reap what you sow with Luciferians. And that's what we're dealing with the dragon and his people. It looks like they don't pay. You know, they do bad things and they don't pay. Nothing bad happens to them. I mean, they they die, they get old, but they don't seem to pay. But now they're going to pay. Now we're back to the narrative. In other words, that's like a little, that could be put in parentheses actually. And then we continue. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and he spake as a dragon and he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Now, so what Jonathan Clack is saying to me then on this regard is that this wound that John had a vision of that wound that was healed. There was some wound there that was healed and then he's pointing to the scar in the back of Obama's head and saying that's the wound. Okay. And um and and going at it in that way. And he doeth great wonders so that he makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Another very important thing. This is kind of the part I'm waiting for. I believe this this 
phrase, 1313, interesting number, has to do with the, um, the power given by the dragon, i.e. the UFOs, the, the, the ships, the technology. This has to do with great technology given to him by the, you know, others. Now, whether there's going to be a public global crisis about the UFO or not, he would have to get this power and display it to be, for, for you to say, okay, well, the 40 months is now, 40 and two months, the 40 and two months is now ticking. Yeah, 40 and two would be, you know, three and a half years. So that's ticking. Right? That's, that's ticking. Um, and deceiveth them that dwell in the earth by the means of these miracles, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. Now we see that there was a sword. There was a wound there by a sword. See, to me, in the past, what it meant to me was, you know, there would be some kind of a, 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 a thing that would be publicly known, like a wound by a sword. And, and he did live. But now we have more information. Instead of just a head wound that one of the heads had, remember, in the vision, one of the heads had, now it's told to us that it was a sword. Sword comes from a, uh, an enemy, an enemy trying to strike you. But it could also be looked at as, say, a scalpel. You know, it doesn't say that there was an enemy. I mean, if you want to be just real technical about it, it doesn't say that sword came from an enemy swordsman. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that should, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Yes, right now, even now. As this is ramping up and we have to talk about this. This is the most important thing in thousands of years, so we should talk about it. Um, the, at this point, everyone's had their Obama dreams and you know, he's, he talks to you. He, the, the image of the beast, there's an image of the beast in our minds that talks uh, separate from him on television. And that has told me, and, the, and a lot of people have had their visions of Obama saying this and that, but the main thing with me was um, the only way this is going to work is he, he, he told me the, the requirement that this, I believe, went out. To, he, he, he's, he's, he can talk. You can see a picture of me. and can talk to you. Oh, he can do this right now. This was something only Jesus could do. Remember how Jesus could talk to these millions of people at the same time and each one personally? Obama can do the same thing. He, did, he has been given that power to do the exact same thing. To me, it's very holographic, yes, and all that. And maybe one day we'll find out just how scientific it all is. But uh, he, he says that I must, um, you know, basically, at the very least, promote him. I must bow down. In order, and I must agree to serve him. In order to, uh, you know, that that's that's the rule, and that's that's what I was told, and um, that's what he told me. And you know, that's what he's telling everyone. And then other people are seeing World War Three, and they're seeing nukes, and they're seeing, you know, pain and suffering, and civil war, and chaos, and all that associated with Obama. And I'm saying, yeah, well, I've had though I had all those years ago those kind of dreams and nuke dreams years ago, you know? So that's a lot of times when you had dreams and visions, they're not going to repeat necessarily unless you really didn't get it and process it. I would not be surprised at all if God allowed nukes to fly at any time. You know, and amidst all this chaos, we see this, but then John says he had a wound with a sword, but lived at, yet, it's not necessarily saying that publicly um, that's known and why they marvel at the beast because people are already, if Obama is the beast, they're already marveling at him uh, right now. They're marveling. They can't believe it. They can't believe that he is 
you know, he's the king and he's proven that he has great power, supernatural powers to be able to exalt himself above the Senate and the Congress and everybody above the rule of law and be a king and be the Pharaoh of Egypt and be the king of Libya and be the, you know, the, 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 the king of the UN and all the nations therein. And is is a, 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 only a supernatural being could actually tame everybody. They would have to have some supernatural powers. Well, I believe the power is uh, over the mind, of mind control and psychic power to speak to people uh, remotely uh, as if there's as if Obama is speaking just to them. We've seen this reported over and over and over and over again. This is this is definitely all happening. Those powers are there. People say, well, that's the power of hypnosis. Yeah, but he would have to speak to you. All he has to do is speak to you and you're hypnotized. There is, there is, you know, if there's any thought of Obama in your mind, you're already under a certain power, you know, and he will talk to you. It's very much like Satan being there trying to, you know, corrupt you and whatever he, he wants. But he has one message for people. One, to do okay in the in the future, you must bow down and serve him. Watch your congressional leaders like Boehner and others. Watch how they get in line. You, you must do likewise. This is the Antichrist. This is, this is Damien the Omen, you know, right? This is, um, you know, they've been waiting a long time and they will do anything, anything. I'm talking about the supporters of Obama. You know, he also wants to launch a new army that would be a youth brigade, you know, just like Hitler. And he's doing everything that other Satanists have done. He's done every single thing, every single thing, thinking that you won't notice. And um, what you're dealing with here is someone far more powerful than Hitler already. And someone who's who's prone to that. So we have this million-man little army of his, of the Youth Brigade, we have uh, the million moms against guns, right? We have, um, you know, all these things in place of of uh, civil war, gun confiscation, world war, d- diminishing the nukes. And everyone is so hypnotized, they can't do anything about it. And it's power wielded by him, even his own handlers and the witches who brought him up, you know, they can't believe how how he is uh, uh, gaining in strength and power in that way. And um, no, he's not just a man. I, he may not be a, a, an actual human being and, you know, completely. Um, but he's not just a another human being, no. He may have be, begun that way, but he's kind of like Nimrod in the sense that he's become something else. And I don't know how that happens and how the, the, the spirit influences the physical influences the outcome, but you know, these things are possible. Nimrod started as a human and, and ended up like a Nephilim. Yeah. I never, I think most people would agree with, you know, how he, you know, he made some sort of transformation that also affected him in a genetic way. And how did he do it? He did it through, doing great blasphemies. He did it by rituals. So that somehow changes them and makes them unavailable to the Lamb's Book of Life. And um, they believe, if this is their guy, they believe in Armageddon bypass, especially the New Agers are pushing that. And New Agers are Satan's brood. So they're pushing... um, No, I don't care how nice they are. You know, they're, they're very hateful to me. I don't know. I've, I've gone to the New Age bookstore here and it's pure venom. What are you talking about? They want to kill me, right? right. As soon as I walk in the door, I feel the, 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 the presence of their demons, you know, and them have the, the demons bringing attention. You know, those spirits are in there bringing their attention to me. And I just feel like they, that some monster is going to jump out of their skin and, and, uh, and devour me. Oh, Absolutely. Little New Agers with their little incense and their little Gaia things and their Gaia stickers, you know, little, uh, little nice little girls with their, you know, with their flowers in their hair and they're walking around with these kind of fluid hippie-like dresses and, you know, being so helpful and they love everyone that comes through the door. But when I come through the door, it's pure hatred. And it's if looks could kill. And it's not just in Santa Fe 
or the Bodhi tree or anywhere. It's global. And it, if you're like me, it'll be the same for you. <laughs> I don't care. When I saw, the, the, look, look, you know, the best thing to do is mock them if, if it gets in your face. If, or ignore them, you know, ignore them. I mean, I, I, I go in. I'm not going to go to a place like that unless I pray up first. And I'm going to make sure that in a look or even a word that they know, that I know, that they know, that I know. You know what I'm saying? That the lamb is no longer asleep. But yeah, I mean, so going into a nice, lovely, love and light, new age bookstore becomes World War Three. It's just, it never changes because it is the word of God. It's the word of God. It's the truth. And so the, the question is, you know, for the more stupid people listening to this show, they're, they're going to start thinking I'm whacked right there. And it's like, you know, there, and I would say to you, well, then you're in denial. Then you don't want to know the truth. You're in denial. And, you know, it's too weird for you. And you don't want to be socially ostracized. And the demons that are in you are trying to get you to turn away. And so, you know, do whatever you're going to do. I, I can't worry about you. I'm going off personal experience as well as the word of God, both. Um, the word of God says persecution. Why would that be if you're, if you're acting the exact same way after you become born again, if you're acting the exact same way, doing the same job, how come suddenly everything changes toward you? Because everything is supernatural, that's why. And, you know, the idea is you shouldn't have taken God in the first place and you'd still be able to uh, hang with the crowd and have fun. But no, no longer. No more parties. Uh, passed over at work for promotion. Uh, encouraged even to leave. But then, but then there's the other side of the coin. They want to keep you around as a perpetual sacrifice. I know. They want to keep you around like the, like the uh, Black Widow has their host you know, has their prey tied up in, in knots, you know, with the, in, in the silk, barely alive. They want to keep you around barely alive to use you as a battery. So it all changes. But we've hit on it, you know. I mean, and that is basically what's happening on the earth. You have to understand the Oprah Winfrey's of the world and the, and the Valerie Jarrett's and the, you know, and the handlers and the Hollywood crowd – they're just blown away. They're marveling. They can't believe it. They are bowing and, and kissing the feet and, you know, doing the whole bit uh, and, and sucking up to Obama. And so is the, all the Senate and Congress, no matter what side of the aisle. Those who are in the know, you know, those who are in the know. And um, it's transcending parties at this point. That's why, you you know... You're going to see the debt. There'll be no argument about the debt ceiling. And, you know, the Republicans will go along with his demands. And uh, there will be no contest. Uh, he will rule as a king, as he ought to rule. And they're all, you're going to see them all bow down. Otherwise, he would not be the Antichrist. He would not be. So we're looking at it. I, and I, you know, in terms of the, what day time will end, and, and who exactly is the Antichrist? And is this the first beast or, 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 or could this be a forerunner to the beast and all those kind of questions? I, I'm always going to leave, you know, I'm going to be a lousy, I don't have to be an Old Testament prophet or a New Testament prophet or a, a Bible prophet at all, you know? I believe the gift of prophecy, reasoning, prediction, teaching, all these things these gifts are, are given to many people to glorify God and to bring the kingdom of God together. And, uh, you know, so, so using these various gifts that I've been given, we're, 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 we're looking at a thing. But one thing I learned a long time ago, you don't want to put God in a box. You don't want to say, absolutely, this is the way it has to be, or God is not God. No, it's the way that you interpreted the scripture right there. That was faulty, not God. See, by putting him in a box and saying he has to act on such and such a date, it's forbidden. It's forbidden because we're not supposed to be superior to God. By saying, you know, the, the lion will jump through the hoop, 
we are being um, condescending to God. I mean, can't you see that? So I say that, you know, anything can happen. And, you know, we look at, and I know there's a lot of prophetic voices out there on YouTube and elsewhere, and they're all followed around by the federal government. <laughs> they were, well, they would love, you know, one of these people to have a John Holmes moment, you know. They would just, uh, yeah, that would be like the ultimate. And, and that's the risk that people take when you go publicly on YouTube or have a podcast that, you know, that, that there'd be people who want to twist you into something, you know, to make an example of you to the others that you all have to shut up and don't talk about Jesus and don't talk about Obama. I'm not talking, you notice I'm not talking about Obama in a really disrespectful way, not even about the, the sex practices. I'm looking at that clinically. I don't, I'm not looking at that as a, um, derogatory. I, I fully expect that from a Luciferian. Um, and I'm not even really judging him because God will do that. And I don't dislike him. You know, I don't hate him. Absolutely not. I don't, you know, no, I don't like people that are liars usually, but you know, you know what I mean? Cause you never know where they're coming from or whether they're just lying to you about being your friend. I had a lot of trauma that way. So I don't tend to trust people too easily. Even people that are on the up and up, it takes me a long time to trust them. You know, I'm just waiting for the other shoe to foot drop. You know, you know, that's, that's how we all are. I mean, we all hurt each other as well. And, um, you, you know, the, the key is to be loving despite the fact that, you know, sorry, I stepped on your toes. Sorry, I stepped on your toe. It's going to happen. But in Obama's case, I don't, you know, and nor do I, I don't dislike John Boehner at all. You know, when he's saying it's, it's, you know, he's crying because of all the opportunities he's gotten, and, and that's wonderful. I don't dislike John Boehner. I don't dislike Barack Obama. I don't dislike Jamie Foxx. I don't dislike Paul McCartney. I, I used to, maybe, because I was um, hurt by elite Satanists who, in the name of their God, hurt me and betrayed me and set me up for death again and again. And I'm like... Why do you want to kill me? I didn't do anything to you. I was like 17. You know, I, was, I didn't understand what I did wrong. You know, I wanted to please them. I wanted them to love me. I wanted to, to love them back. I wanted, you know, just the things a, a teenager would want. But no. No. There was some kind of a war going on, and I'd never understood why, and it freaked me out, and... I never understood what I did wrong. I, I just, I just, and then God has shown me over the years. So the trauma is healed now. It's a nice big scar from 17. You know, most, most kids are traumatized at 17. If you're an artist, if you're serious, if you're a thinker of any kind of philosopher or whatever, you'd probably be pretty disturbed at the world around you and yourself. Cause around that age is, you know, when, um, it's expected that you will agree to serve the beast. I mean, that's pretty much the only way you could go on to college. And, you know, and you're just supposed to accept that, you know, the dragon breathes out, you breathe in, you breathe out, the dragon breathes in. You know, you're just symbiotically connected in that way. And um, those of you who rebel, um, you well, you know the result of the life that you've led. And um, I wouldn't trade it for anything because I, I just can't even imagine being in the high point, <laughs> just, you know, I know that I've, that they've programmed me from time to time and I've, and I've kind of, they've, they've laughed as I've done everything that they were telling me to do. But, um, you know, I, I just put it this way. My Lord, you know, obviously preserved me for a purpose and, um, not, not that there's, you know, I know a lot of people who have bowed down and, and then come out and repented and, you know, it's, that's, that's used, that's the norm. That's like 99.9% .9 of the people out there. 99.9% .9 of the people out there know of Satan and know of Lucifer. I mean, everybody knows, but no one talks about because they don't want to get in trouble. So, but I understand. I understand. That's why you don't hear preachers talking like this. Because they have to make it, you know, they have to deceive you into thinking that it's a group over here, it's a group over there, it's the Bilderbergers, it's the Illuminati, it's these people, it's those people, it's never you. Well, it is us. 
Um, we were made to serve them. We were made for them to indwell us. We were altered, fallen, so they would take over. And they did. Jesus delivers us from the whole wreckage of humanity and restores us to what we were even in the pre-Adamic state. And um, gets us out of this one-dimensional, three-dimensional type prison that we've been held captive in for all these years. The doors are blown off and we're, we're allowed to go back home. You know, home meaning, you know, everything that is is our home. You know, the, but reality, the way it, 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 it's not here, but it is. Now, yeah, I also want to talk about, you know, the beast who was and, 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 and who, uh, who was and is not and yet is. Um, that phrase is very, very used a lot in magical circles. You know, it, it, it is... It is not. It almost goes to the Donovan song. Remember that Donovan song? First there is a mountain, then there is no mountain, then there is. Kind of like a magical phrase, right? First there is a mountain, then there is no mountain, then there is. Um, the beast who was and is not and is um, a lot of ways you can look at that. A lot of people parse that differently, but I mean, you know, you can look at it like a beast who isn't really a beast, but who is a beast, you know? In other words, a genetic alteration person that isn't, but yet is, you know, a beast, but is human, but then is a beast. The, the Another way of looking at it is, you know, he, he, he is, but then in another mind, there's a time where it all disappears and everything I'm talking about just disappears and he's just a man and these are just men and there's just nothing, you know, it's, it is it is a, a, a thing born of supernature yet just nature, but, but supernature. And, um, and there's a lot, I've heard a lot of different interpre uh, interpretations of that, um, you know, who was before but isn't, you know, for, in other words, isn't in history, and then is, the beast is returned. The, in other words, this goes to the pyramids. The gods have returned. They, they are, they were, and yet they are not, but now they are. You know, you know but, I, but I always marveled at that in, in Donovan's uh, music because it would seem like a direct parallel. First there is a mountain, then there is no mountain, then there is. Then he's calling to Juanita. Juanita, I know your name. So you got this whole kind of um, sort of reference to, you know, Santeria, black magic, uh, sex magic, and so forth there with Juanita. And what's the next thing? I don't know how it gets to be the Spanish thing ends up meaning black magic, but uh, whatever. I don't know why that is. It's like the Eric Bird and the Animal song. Remember that old song, uh, Drink the Wine? What do you think that was about? I'd said a long time ago that The Happening was, uh, you know, Diana Ross singing The Happening was, was about a satanic initiation. But the cover of it is that was the Andy Warhol party it was called The Happening, right? So... Um, you know, that the, suddenly there was this thing going on. And uh, there's always a double entendre on everything satanic. It's, I don't know, it's all, there's a power there. that ve it's, it's called the veil. So a lot of these things are just beneath the veil. They, they want you to learn from Madame Blavatsky. They want you to learn from Manly P. Hall. They want you to learn from, you know, these kind of people about these secrets. They don't want you to hear from me or other people like us talking about this. They want you to hear from those people so you can understand it with respect. They don't want you to hear it from a derogatory standpoint like me, who's just saying that, you know, Yahweh's laughing at this and he's going to open up a can of whoop ass. And they're saying, oh, yeah, prove it. Looks like your God's gone, gone and he's off on a vacation somewhere. Well, my God was. 
He is, he was, he is, and will be forevermore. In other words, is, 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 he is, he, he, not like he is, and then he is not, and then he is. He is, and then he is, and then he is. And, you know, so there you go. In other words, God has the power to veil Satan whenever he wants. So the beast was, right? He was in the, let's say he was in the garden. And then, you know, and then he was not. No, God can make him not. And then he is again. What was of old has come again. What was the Old Testament is becomes the New Testament. Um, the Lord Messiah, Jesus Christ, is coming. So therefore, we have the first horse, the Antichrist, and then the Christ. Makes perfect sense. And I asked Johnny Point Blank, and I've seen a couple of videos, and, and, and other people. I mean, I haven't, I haven't tuned into everybody, but I kind of reached out to him and a couple other people as I, as I finally got some time to, to you know, you know, it's been kind of hectic, but I've had time to, you know, I'm just really concerned about a few things here. And, and he's really, like I say, convinced. And his partner there um, that, that works on videos as well does a really great job, Clay. They both are of kind of one mind on this, that this is the guy and this is the time and this is... This is um, and this is it. And I'm and I'm just telling you, yeah. Well, I say all the same things, and I've got no problem with Johnny's interpretation of uh, the head wound. Uh, although I like a lot of things, you know, I, it's not like I have any doubt about you know Obama as Antichrist and all this. It's just that I have respect for God. That I just. When it's time for you to know something like that, you will know. You don't need me to tell you what to think. We've laid out all the evidence here and we're showing it. And what I'm good at is, is telling you what's going on play by play. You know what I mean? Like what's going on in the spiritual realm in terms of is he in, is he out, where is he? What do the witches think of him? What's Oprah think of him? What do other people think of him? You know, what's going on there in that worship thing? How many people are worshiping? You know, that... that the movements of the spirit in this regard regarding Barack Obama. And, and, you know, if you think he's the Antichrist, you can't hate the guy. You know, this is all prophesied to happen. This is all God's will. This is all written in God's word. It's not like it's, he's not behaving in any way other than, than how he should behave being who he is. You, I, no, people don't like it. Do you like being around a selfish narcissist who just basically, while smiling in your face, stabs you in the back? Is that what you want? But, I mean, that's what he does, and they keep coming back for more, so there's something going on there. In other words, they have the attitude of all for you, Damien. If I have to die to lift you up to serve you, so be it. So it's all for you, Damien. You remember that scene in, in The Omen where the maid, I believe, she was cleaning upstairs and she got possessed because Damien wanted a sacrifice, so he was able to possess her. She wrapped a sheet around her neck and jumped out the window during an, a garden party they were having outside. I don't know if it was his birthday party or something. It may have been his birthday party. And she says, all for you. In other words, she was, she was just fine to go kill herself as a sacrifice unto Damien. She was, just, she was that dedicated. That's the dedication, exactly that, that I'm talking, that they get, they all, they're, they're all like that. And they don't tell you that because it's all done in secret. But they... But they pledge allegiance, you know, and they pledge their lives. Not to the country, but to serve Barack Obama. And will defend with their lives if necessary. It's no problem for them. They have their savior. They have their Lord. They're, they're good to go. They're good. They're ready to die. So, I, and the ones that aren't, maybe there's some hope for them with the Lord. But I just thought we had to cover all this today. There's a lot to it. And, um, you know, my hope is that you just won't be freaked out and upset, you know, at the things to, that must come. 
you know, they're working off the, they don't seem to care about kids at Sandy Hook or anything else. I mean, the, the people who jumped on that are just using the kids. They, they seem to know what the, the sacrifice was all about. And they didn't shed one tear. They just jumped on board. And, you know, and any tears Barack shed was fake. You know, obviously he, he was getting that, that, that sacrifice was something that he took it as a sacrifice to his power. You know, for his agenda. And he was going to use it for that purpose. And they all jumped on on cue. So that means they didn't, not only did they not have remorse, but they knew that Sandy Hook was a satanic ritual. Period. And then they blamed the kid as a scapegoat. But it was organized differently than that. And it had to do with um, establishing the kingdom of Barack Obama, of, of Lucifer on earth through Barack. But Barack will get the credit that God made him. Yes, Lucifer made him. God made him. Well, whatever he's made of, then he was made by his own. Um, you know, God made Satan. God made the fallen angels who made us. You know, who, who or who remade us, who perverted us. Who, what, what we are today, we owe half of it to them. Gee, thanks very much. Um, sure, whatever. But they believe that God, that when they say God, they... They mean Lucifer, their God, but they'll never say it that way. They'll say, God, God made Barack Obama to come save us. You know, there's nowhere in, when they say God, Barack is the, is the second coming of Christ, they can't possibly believe that he is, you know, they don't like Jesus. So they would never say the second coming of Christ. It's more like Barack Obama is the Messiah that Jesus should have been, but wasn't. And no matter how much he lies, no matter how much he cheats them out of tax money and everything else, no matter how much of these um, gimmicks go on where basically he's just, you know, the people of America are there to sacrifice their lives for him. That's, that's how he looks at it. And no matter how, how um, much of this he does, in other words, uh, glorifies himself at the expense of the American people, they will continue to worship him unto death. Isn't that amazing? He could basically just say, I'm the terrorist that's, that's doing stuff to you. I'm the murderer. I've done it. All. And they'll say, all for you, Dame. They'll, you know, he wouldn't even have to have a ruse that someone else is doing it. He could say, I need to sacrifice 30 people today, you know, for my uh, power, so step up and they're probably be volunteers. You know, it's, you're dealing with that kind of insanity. <laughs> um, it's not really insanity when you look at it from their perspective though, from their perspective, it's religion, it's dedication, it's commitment, but all those virtues that they have are misspent because they're deceived into thinking that when he talks, he tells the truth and that he cares about them, which he doesn't. No, the Antichrist would have no empathy, whereas Jesus would be empathic. The Antichrist would be selfish, whereas Jesus would be serving others as the lowest in the kingdom. Uh, the Antichrist would prop himself up as the highest in the kingdom. It's very simple. It's symmetrical, it's mathematical, and it's precise. So, so far, it lines up that, you know, the other day I said, so far, not the Antichrist. And I would say that... Um, Today, I would say, yeah, I would, I would say tending to Antichrist status, tending towards this is the end status. Um, sure. But does God want you to think it's the end? What would you do if you, if you thought, well, this is the last three years of my life? We haven't had World War III, you know, the, the big shooting war, nukes and everything. We haven't had civil war, although there's a lot of people threatening it. We haven't had, um, um, you know, the, 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 the ultimate, well, we are in kind of a, a depression uh, financially, but, you know, it's not like 50% out of work and banks shut, you know, that sort of thing. So we haven't had that per se. And, you know, we haven't had some of the troubles that we uh, would associate with Antichrist. Uh, so therefore him being antichrist could very well be 
you know, as we continue here, a PSYOP, although if it is a PSYOP, there's a lot of people who have fallen in line to worship who aren't, who would not be the target of the PSYOP. The target of the PSYOP would be the uh, Judeo-Christian world who would be looking at this prophetically from the Bible, that they would think, oh, this is it. And, you know, is that happening? Anything is possible. You just got to push in the Lord. I, I always want to say, when you label someone the AC or you say this is the time, you always set yourself up for failure. Because, you know, the Lord wants certain things to be fluid. When it, all you really need to know about Barack Obama is he considers himself a king. He's put himself above the United States. Nobody can, no one can indict him, arrest him, talk to him, nothing. He's free to rule over the entire earth. And that, that tends to, to the, the, they marvel after the beast, they are marveling, and that tends to speak tremendous supernatural powers they didn't have before that he has now. And uh, the Republicans bowing down is another cause to marvel, uh, that they'll bow down, but not because he's putting political pressure on them. They're bowing down because they think he's the devil and, and you know, he is their God. You know, so it's... Where could it lead? Uh, I would say that if this is true completely, it would then lead to the fulfillment of the uh, the judgments, the bowls and vials of judgment leading up to Revelation 18. I believe you would see uh, a tremendous amount of, uh, you know, and, and 1920, et cetera. You would see, um, you know, the stage set over the next couple of years for the judgments of Almighty Yahweh uh, to be poured out. You know, but we can't have that unless we can trap the devil in a human uh, configuration. Book of Daniel is, is, is saying, literally, that um, after all the exploits, he will lose. You know, um, and we know from the Bible, of course, that you know Satan loses in the end. But he, Barack Obama, if he is that person, the trajectory is on right now. He will have a very hard crash at the end of all. He will lose. They will be heartbroken and say he wasn't the one. Oh no! And then you all, you prophets out there that that uh, were prophesying, saying this is it. This is the guy. You're all going to be saying, what then? You know, and I told Johnny, I said, I'm not 100% going to jump one way or the other right now in terms of proclaiming that he is or he isn't. The, I've gotten lots of prophetic things too in the spirit and um, about him, you know, and I've, and I've shared them, but it's meant to be, in my case, the Lord wants me to, to, to unfold it in real time, as we go and comment on it and ex explain some of my own visions about, you know, what's going on in the spiritual realm um, and, um, and and talk about the way I've been talking about it. You know, I don't, I, I'm not led to say, this is it, this is the guy, and in just um, a f cup, any time now, the Lord's going to come for you and no worries. And uh, in any event, this is the end. This is the end of the earth. This is the end of the time. I love to say this is the end of the time. In my music, you'll see in my words, I say it's the end of the time. I love to keep saying it's the end of the time. I, I say it over and over again. So maybe I'm resisting my own reality of existence, of what I am, you know, here to do. And I'm consciously rebelling against myself and saying, I'm not going to put a box on God and say this is, this is the time. This is the guy. This is the event, and your Lord will be here in, uh, you know, basically about three years. Um, you know, you'll, about four years from now, you'll be experiencing the Lord's rule upon the earth. Remember, 40 in two months. That's basically, you know, uh, you know, Three years is 36, right? And then 40 months is, is three years and four months. 
plus two would be three years and six months, which would be three and a half years, which if you take the time of the inauguration and after, so the, the coronation, inauguration, sometime in this next coming up period, we're watching, because I do believe that if he is into it, there'll be like a super nature about something different about him that would be different from even now in the next couple of weeks, in the next couple of weeks. So you got to keep watching and, and to see if you, you notice that there'll be something different. Lord, I think something, yeah, something would be noticeable. And that you can expect further, you know, a, uh, a more quickness for more people to bow down at that point. Because they'd say, oh, this is writing on the wall. And I'm, see, these people sold out to the devil already. Don't you understand that? They already went to the devil for protection way back when they were kids. So this is, you know, so it's a no-brainer for them. I know there are secretaries and whatnot. They, they go to church, a lot of these people, or they go to the temple or they, you know, they're, you know, they have their, but then they have this secret thing in their lives. And, um, you know, because they were weak, they wanted protection. And they believe that, you know, a guy like Rahm Emanuel will protect them. And Barack Obama will protect them. They're looking to bow down. They want a um, a dictator to rule over them. They don't want a president, and you know they want a a ruler who is a messiah, who is supernatural, who is above and beyond human, who can take care of them. And that's what they want. They want to be like children. It's kind of a mirror image of the way it is with God. You know, it it really is. You can't blame them. You know, they're. It's not like they're invent they're being creative inventing. It, they're they're basically stuck with the opposite of what the thing is with God. And and like I say, they already have worship centers, they have they plan to to roll out this worship of the beast. They plan to roll out all the things of the book of Revelation, including places of worship for Obama, more images, and eventually that uh chip which will also show your dedication. I mean, in other words, at some point you'll be, you'll be told that you have to make a choice and to prove you've made the choice to serve Barack Obama, you would take the chip. I mean, that's the kind of scenario you'd have to see to play out the whole Antichrist thing to the, to the end. I know we've talked about it quite a bit. We've talked about it a few times. We really have. And... Um, you know, I'm not willing to, uh, to do the Old Testament or New Testament prophetic thing of, you know, suffice to say, my, my track record speaks for itself pretty much. I mean, there, there's, um, there's still World War Three, Iran and all that to contend with, but, um, you know, which means we may not be here, but I mean, a lot of the things that, that were said, you know, have come to pass. And um, I'm just led to say it this way. And I fully respect Jonathan Clack for saying it his way. He, you know, believes this is, this is the guy. He's very sincere with that. And I told him I was just, it's not doubt. I think he thought I was doubting that, you know, his word. It's like, no, I'm not doubting his word. I'm just looking at my word, not his word. I mean, his word is he believes that Barack Obama is the Antichrist. This is the time we're going home with Jesus. Okay, fine. I'm looking at it like, okay, Barack Obama is definitely the most satanic figure and most worshipped and adored uh, we've ever seen and has tremendous supernatural powers. The people are marveling after him as the beast. He fulfills a lot of the book of Daniel and and all kinds of prophecies. Um, and And I'm... But I'm not saying that there isn't room for another scenario, anything else. I remember when everyone did this with Prince Charles, that he was the Antichrist. And I'm like, you know, Antichrist and a cup of tea. Remember that guy, Tim Cohen, that wrote that book? And that was popular back in the early 2000s, remember, in the last decade? And people were just convinced that Prince Charles was the Antichrist. And now you see he's gone down. Now, he never had a position like Obama, where he was just, you know, the most powerful guy in the world. And then, and then boosting himself above... This is the most powerful man we've ever seen in America. 
but then he may want to descend a bit and play Lincoln and cause a civil war, you know, just for vanity purposes. So I do believe that, you know, so there's that. And then there's the fact that he came back from Hawaii just as a man, you know, as a frightened little man. And then, you know, somehow they put him back together and then, you know, it's, it's a fluid situation. And, and that's all I can say. The, the scar in the back of the head and looking at that as fulfillment of that scripture, um, Remember, John said it was on one of his heads. You know, so he's talking about the beast configuration. That's a multi-head beast, multi-headed beast. So we're talking about, um, you know, it's very metaphorical at that point. Uh, but the gist from the initial reading of the Bible would suggest that the public would marvel because of how he was struck with a sword and he and he not only recovered, but he became... A uh, hundred times more powerful, or something to that effect. I mean, that's kind of what people thought. That's the way the narrative goes. It, it, if you parse it very closely, you could disconnect this idea that that people knew about the wound, that the people that did know about the wound, this scar on the back of his head, they 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 took that as a sign that he was the Antichrist. You know, so I I can see it that way, and I can see it the the, the public way. You know, and um, no worries. There's a peace tre- treaty with Israel on the Nile. But again, when we get up to the inauguration here, we got three and a half years for a lot of things that would have to come due. And you know, it's moving very quickly. No question. I think I'm out of my mind. I should just follow the crowd and say, okay, this is it. This is the guy. It, it's it, you know, you're you're going another three and a half years. You're going to be with the Lord, so it doesn't matter. You're down. Hallelujah. Not that easy, folks. That's why they pay me the big bucks. <laughs> because I, the buck stops here. I'm, I'm not going to, you know, I'm, if it's not in me to say, it's not in me to say. It's not in me to, 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 to call it like that. That's not the way the Lord wants me to talk about it. We're just dealing with Barack Hussein Obama, the Antichrist, maybe. But what, what but whatever it is, it's the rise of... of of, of Satan within a person of the dragon, like we've seen before and, and we'll see again. But, you know, in this case, it's just very distinct and very strong, as strong as Adolf Hitler, Stalin, Mao, even stronger. But these people that amass this power like this, looking at his whole history, looking at the prophecies and Daniel, looking at everything, you'd, you'd be led to say, and you can say this, yes, he's the guy. Yes, this is it. Hallelujah, Jesus is returning, and I'm going to see it in my lifetime. I can't wait. Which is the proper response. Not, oh no, all this horrible stuff is going to happen. No, that's not the right response. The right response is, yeehaw, we're going home. You know, we came here. It was a job. You know, even if... (laughs) I sit there trying to make money, and and I'm thinking, what the heck am I thinking? I mean, if you can't take anything with you, you know. But I I feel like, you know, whatever, whatever. God puts us here. It's you know we have to be good stewards of what He gives us. It's really His money and His opportunities and His businesses. It really is His, and so we have to direct our lives in such a way to serve Him, and and we're doing that. But I mean. You know, I look at I look at uh, the things people have built, for example, like they built businesses and corporations and different things. And then I'm thinking, like, you don't understand. The powers that be don't really care about your business. They care more about their God coming to earth and, and worshiping him. All for you, Damien. And yes, to, they, 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 they're making that pledge across the country. Really, that, that pledge is unto death. The kind of pledge that you would make to defend the Constitution. They're making to defend Barack Obama. It's it's unbelievable, uh, you know. They are throwing themselves at him, including the Republicans, and I, I'm just amazed. You know, what we're witnessing here is, you know, I'm kind of excited just because it's just so supernatural, you know. And remember the Sandy Storm, completely, and then the Sandy Hook thing sacrifice and the Hawaii thing and then back as I'm tracking I'm going wow this is like reading a story in the Bible this is amazing this is religion 
This is the way religion, shoot, if, if church was like this, I'd be there every day. If we could talk about this kind of stuff, you know, about like what's happening and who's possessed and who isn't and what does it mean and seeking the Lord and wondering and maybe fasting because we don't know what it means and hoping the Lord will show us something. You know, I just love that. Don't you? <laughs> I'll see you next time. God bless each and every one.